Hey, this is Shane from Shane's Books and Review. I hope that the day has treated you well. As promised, I just finished another book. It was Children of the Fleet from Orson Scott Card. So, let's jump into it. First, though, I have to tell you there's going to be some spoilers. They're incoming. You better not go on if you don't want to know. Five, four, here they come. Three, two, you've been warned. One, zero, okay. <laughs> here it is. So, was it an enjoyable book to read? Most certainly it was. It's a good standalone story. You could certainly read this book on its own and it would stand up by itself. It wouldn't have the same meaning to you, but you can read it on its own and then go back and read Ender's Game. There was a particular point in the book about Midways where I thought that Orson Scott Card had lost his way. Uh, thankfully, I went back and reread that section and realized it was me. I just didn't read it the right way the first time. My perception was off. I guess I was just having a bad day. And the way that I read it the first time made me think, eh, he's churning books out. God save us all. But no, that's not what it was. Instead, whenever I read it the second time, the way that I saw it was completely different, and thankfully so. We have a new character. The new character is Debeat. Debeat, I guess, is going to be the kid that's going to be focused on in a new series. He's got his own issues. He's a bit of a punk, really. But kind of in a good way. He's a lovable little punk because where most children that are highly intelligent don't understand why they can't make friends and why they have problems socially, he's smart enough to understand and get it. And he's trying too hard. He knew that he had problems trying to make friends or trying to interact with people. He knew that he had problems Earthside with the kidnapping that had happened earlier in the book and with his mother possibly in danger. He knew that he had problems with Fleet School possibly being attacked. He knew that he had to solve these problems. He didn't quite know how to do it since he wasn't quite asserting the leadership role that other kids before him had, such as Ender and Bean. He wasn't forming a Jeesh either. The device of the book wasn't so much that he transformed into a Ender or into a Bean. Moreover, was the beat growing without becoming those two characters. So I would like to extend a thank you to Orson Scott Card for not falling into the same trap that other people have in the past of trying to rewrite the same things over and over. It was a very subtle thing and I almost missed it. But thankfully, I didn't. Enjoyable characters in the book, besides Debeat himself, you have Harold McGrath, which I'm glad that he was in there. I just can't get enough of that guy. And then Monk, or Monkey. There was somebody else that popped in there, Mr. Wiggins himself. He was there for a very short period of time in an Ansible call. And it was refreshing to see his perspective on what was going on and to hear him call to beat on his problems, as it were, and just tell him, hey, dude, man up a bit, huh? One of the reasons why Monk was such an enjoyable character had to do with whenever DeBeat came to her, she turned the tables on him quite quickly. She really does get people, and she's incredibly intelligent as well, or she wouldn't be where she is. Whenever he tried to manipulate her, she instead manipulated him. She put him in his place very quickly, but not in a bad way. She reached deep inside of him and grabbed hold of the human that he thought wasn't there and brought that to the surface. I think that she'll be an instrumental part of making that kid grow. I would love to see more of that girl in that book, if there is another one. Now for Mr. Graff himself. It's always good to see him in one of these books. It brings a smile to my face. And in this book, he didn't disappoint. He had a lot more lines than he usually does. He's been in so many of them. He's became one of my favorite characters. Now, Harum is getting old. He's getting up there in the years in the books. And I hate to say it, but I'm sure sometime soon, he's gonna bite it. Either old age or a spacer accident. It's not unheard of. Authors do kill sometimes. It's never fun when it does happen. One thing about Battle School, yes, it was happening at the International Fleet Battle School Station. However, that place had been repurposed for just an academy. It was no longer the actual Battle School, although they still had battles there. It wasn't a military application anymore. Uh, and it was well known to to be before he got there. There was a new device that was introduced to Battle School in the Battle Room particularly, which was blocks and building. 
imagine an industrial set of Legos, because the handholds, if they were moved a particular way, would pop a block off the wall. And then you can use said block to arrange in groups of four structures, and those structures would attach to each other, so they could make pillars, pyramids, basic machines of war. He figured this out and ended up starting to form a Jish, but because of Debit's attitude and problems with people, he ended up breaking his own group. The first Jish that he could have formed, he destroyed simply because of his patronizing attitude towards others. Points about the book that I didn't really care for. Anybody that's read the books for Ender and or the Shadow series already is quite aware of geopolitical situations. Less is more sometimes. Uh, I think that it was just enough if you had never read it before that you would have been okay whenever it came to Graph manipulating another child, as it were. At points in the book, I was suspecting that it was Graph, really, that had manipulated that whole situation with Debeed in that it really wasn't kidnapped, that Graph had done it just as a setup to see if he could get that kid to grow. Because let's be honest, Graph has done some, not necessarily shady, but high-level chess type things before in the past whenever it comes to kids and getting them to get outside of their comfort bubble and to do things that they didn't know were even possible. The way that DeBeat was kidnapped and then him running his mouth about it and his test scores. Uh, yeah, sure, the kid's smart, but that was, I guess, a growing moment for him. But it was painful to watch, really, because, you know, if you're smart, you don't have to tell people they know. And if you're as scary smart as these kids are wrote in the books, like Ender or Bean or DeBeat in the 190 to 240 IQ range, people will just know by being in the same room with them. So rubbing it in that, you know, if these tests are accurate, I was kidnapped because of how smart I am. That's one of the reasons why the kids didn't like him. So I understand the flavoring that was put in there. This is one of the reasons why he wasn't a liked kid. I'm hoping that now that we've gotten to the end of this first book and he's learned some of those lessons that he will grow a little bit out of that. Which moves me into the second point. There is this big father dilemma all the way through the book. Who's my daddy? And that would be incredibly painful as a child to not know if it was a question of I don't know who my dad is and I will never find out that's something that a person would probably eventually be able to accept in my mindset I would think that it would be better to have the finality of I will never know than I think that I could find out and it could be this person or this person he called somebody out towards the end of the book and that person was like mm, no nope, not your dad the amount of hurt that that kid would suffer from that is irreparable and it will cause so much more harm further down the line I really don't understand why the person that said no doesn't see why he should have just been honest and said yes and then accepted that part of life. Because as a parent, there's nothing any more splendid than your children. There was some magic that was recaptured for me. The thing that hooked me with Ender's Game, which was the first book from Orson Scott Card that I read, had to do with Ender himself the character development and his internal dialogue whenever he was trying to defeat bullies or teachers, situations that he was put into or formix slash teachers and just growing as a person. So everything that was going on in that kid's head was absolutely amazing to me to read. Now in here, in this book, was whenever Debeat went outside of battle school and was on the actual station itself. The internal dialogues was played back. So Debeat was working things out for himself. He was trying to figure out how to turn his front mind off so the subconscious could do that work. He tried video games first, but nothing really clicked for him until he finally went out into space. Would I recommend getting the book for yourself and reading it? If you enjoy space and not so much the explosions and, and strife and bang bang shoot 'em up type books. If you like books that have plot and you like books that have character development, yes. This is definitely not a big action thriller, as it were. If you've never read Orson Scott before, you could probably get this one and you'll be perfectly fine reading it. It won't be as rich of a read if you've never read Ender's Game before. If you don't know who Ender or his sister or his brother or who Harem is, and you've never seen any of that backstory, 
these characters aren't going to live as much. So, I enjoyed the book. Thank you, Orson Scott Card, for your efforts. Thank you for putting these things down on the pages for us to read. And for you, the viewer, thank you so much for hanging out with me today and watching the video. Please, leave some comments down below. Click that subscribe button. Click the like button. Share this. Let me know what you think of the book after you read it. Give it a thumbs up. Give it a thumbs down in the comments. Tell me what your takes on the book are. Do you like to be? Do you not like to be? Do you like the way that Harum handles things? Or do you think that he should be hung out to dry? It's completely up to you what you have to say. And I want to hear it. So, until next time, get yourself a good book. And I'll see you on the next video.